you five different ways to practice West Coast Swing by yourself. What's up everyone, Brian B, West Coast Swing Online. We're bringing this video to you live from the lockdown due to the coronavirus here in the great city of Louisville, Kentucky. So we're gonna talk about five different ways that you can practice West Coast Swing by yourself. Now we've put out a lot of videos with a lot of different techniques and things. So you're gonna hear a little bit of the same stuff, but I wanted to make sure to give you guys um, something that's a little different in a way to approach this. And as I was thinking about this class, I hit on something that my ballroom coach uh, talked to me about years ago and that really made a big difference in my, in my dancing a long time ago. So we're gonna cover things um, rolling through your feet. We're gonna cover uh, pattern things. We're gonna talk about ways to improve your spins, connection, uh, your smoothness, and then I've got a little bonus for you at the end. So this is also a live interactive class. We're gonna keep rolling, but please send your questions in as early as possible. We will try to get them in as we go. How many people are joining us tonight, Mr. Benjamin? Right now we're It's a small group. 35. 35 people, all right, cool. So let's very first talk about rolling through our feet. Now a lot of you guys may or may not have heard that, and I'll do this a couple different directions, uh, but stay with me if you've seen this because we're gonna scale it up into something I bet you have not seen. So we're talking about rolling through my feet. If I'm moving backwards, rolling through my feet would be literally rolling from the toe of my foot through the, the ball of my foot through to my heel. So if we did this again, moving back, we would trace our foot across the floor. So this alone is a good practice drill. Then as we take our weight, I'm gonna roll from my toe to my ball into the heel of my foot. And if you notice, my weight hasn't completely committed to that. I'm gonna move my weight across. So as I roll my foot, as my knee passes, I'm gonna roll into the ball of my foot and you can see I'm holding my weight into my heel and I'm gonna roll into this, right? And we're gonna thread a lot of different concepts through this. So let's just do this again. We're gonna pull the foot back. When my knees get together, I'm gonna roll my weight into the ball of my foot and then onto my heel. I'm gonna roll through and then onto my heel. I'm gonna roll through and then onto my heel. Cool, so we'll do it back the other way. So this will also introduce something called rolling count. So rolling count can be an ambiguous term that we hear about in West Coast Swing. Really, it's a movement concept that applies to all dancing. So if we walked back four beats, one, two, three, four, which is something very common, at least two steps back for the leader. What I want to do is think about and, and is my foot passing underneath me, the uh is my foot progressing ahead of me, and then the one is where I actually take weight. So I can think of this and a one, and a two. If I did it one more time back the other way, we have and a one, and a two. And if you notice, I'm very smoothly transferring my weight. And I know that might be simplistic, but we're gonna show you a drill to be able to put that straight to music and with your patterns. So the same thing going forward, I'm gonna give you guys two different options. As I'm moving my foot from behind me to forward, I'm gonna pass underneath my body and I'm gonna reach my foot in front of me, right? Now I've got two options. At this point, I can either roll into the ball of my foot. If you guys have watched Miss Megan dance, she rolls into the ball of her foot more often than not, right? So I'm stepping into the ball of my foot. The other option and probably the easier one and the one that we actually teach more because it's a little bit more intuitive is to roll this foot out in front of you. As it gets in front of me, I'm gonna move this from the toe of the foot to the heel, slight heel lead, not a big heel lead, but a slight heel lead. Now I'm gonna measure my weight rolling from my heel into the ball of my foot, right? I'm gonna trace my foot, heel into the ball of my foot, heel into the ball of my foot. So if we do that forward using our rolling count, we have and a one, and a two, and a three, and a four. Now that seems overly simplistic, but if we break dancing down, all it is is organized walking, right? So the control of our weight through our feet is very important. So you can practice that drill moving forward and back. And we're gonna move fast through this video. We've got, only got 30 minutes and I've got five topics to cover. Second part of that is we're gonna practice our triple steps. So if we roll through our feet in triple steps, and I'll do this sideways so you can see the weight commitment, I'm gonna roll into the ball of my feet for my triple, and then I'm gonna step to the side for my step. So I roll triple step, triple step. So if you're doing that with me, that's pretty basic, right? But I really want to practice the weight change, right? So if I go triple step, remember I'm taking weight on the ball of my foot and I'm delaying the heel lowering. So if you guys have ever danced ballroom or seen any cha-cha, I sometimes uh, think of cha-cha on West Coast Swing as the same foot action and leg action. Now it looks completely different. 
what's the difference? In cha-cha, I would articulate into the ball of the foot, into the heel really quickly, and I would spend all of my time using my hips in the step, right? So if I did that triple step, four and one, I would step immediately into a flat foot, right? The same action on my foot, but the speed at which I do it with really makes a difference. So if I'm thinking about West Coast Swing, I'm gonna go one and two and three and four and. So it becomes much more about the legs and the knees, less about the hips, cool? So right now we've got a walk and we have a triple. Do we have any questions so far? Nope. No questions so far. Here's where I'm gonna blow your mind. This is the part that you might not have seen before. We are gonna change, Miss Emily's running to get music, but I'm first gonna set this up. So we're gonna practice this. And as I was thinking about this class, I wanted it to be very practical and dig into something. If I were to redo this and have to practice for West Coast Swing on my own, knowing what I know, what would I do? Great, rolling through the feet, rolling current, articulation of the feet. We've seen all this stuff before, but how do I practice it by myself? So first I'm gonna give you a drill. Let's count it first, because we're gonna change the timing of it because we're gonna marry two things. Number one, this slow, boring, dry practice, and number two, dancing it to speed. And so what our goal is, is to master it slowly, but then we have to close the gap to dancing to speed. We have to close that gap, right? Because when we learn things, the music moves fast and we sometimes can't apply them. So here's the drill. I'm gonna do this back to the camera and count with me and kind of do it along with me, right? We're gonna do this drill, we're gonna count it. One and two, three and four, five and six, seven and eight. Piece of cake, so we're thinking in eight beat increments. But now we're gonna slow it down. This is gonna be really weird. We're gonna dance half time to the music. So this is gonna be a little bit of a musicality mind bend and a great way to practice to different speeds. So now we're gonna dance. We're gonna dance a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we're gonna dance a slow one. Then we're gonna go back to fast. One and two, three and four, five and six, seven and slow. A one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, fast. One, two, three, I'm sorry. <laughs> one and two, three and four, five and six, seven and slow. A one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. A one and two, three and four, five and six, seven and eight. So we're gonna go back and forth between slow and fast, and that's a mind meld. The reason why this is brilliant, and it's kind of funny, a coach years ago brought me this drill for cha-cha, and he was an older gentleman, he's probably in his 80s, early 80s now, a uh, brilliant guy by the name of Ray Rivers, and he brought me this coach, this drill that he got taught in like the early, mid 60s, right? And so he brought it to me, and as I was reading, can you slide across, as I was reading some of these boring dance books, I found science to explain away some of the things that he taught. So not only this tried and true, it is also scientifically backed because we're gonna have to pay attention to the timing changes. This is the part that's gonna blow your mind. Let's play some music. It's gonna be really loud in here, but it should be good for you guys. We're gonna wait 16 beats and then we're gonna start. Just the triples. Eight more beats. One, two, three, four, and five, six, starting fast. One and two, three and four, Five and six, seven and slow. Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, fast. One and two, three and four, five and six, seven, now slow. Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, fast. One and two, three and four, five and six, seven and slow. Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Two more times. Oh, one and two. Three and four, five and six, seven, now slow. Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, one and two. Mind melding, mind melding, I know, but that is a killer, a killer way. So you guys have all learned these boring drills and they sometimes become automatic pilot and you go, hey, I'm doing it. You have to bring it back to the coach so they can yell at you and tell you're doing it wrong and pay all this extra money, but that is, a great way to walk through something. Now, 
you can apply the same thing, the same concept of dancing fast and slow to all of your different patterns, right? So we've talked about, um, we've talked about our walks. You could apply this to the walks, right? I don't have all the room in the, in the world, but I can dance one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then I could do it slowly. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, faster, one, two, three, four, right? So you're working between fast and slow music. That is an excellent way to drill things. But if we, oh, we got comments. What do we got for comments? I can, if you guys come, so they're talking about the weather and bats on the live feed. So if you guys are coming here to learn something fantastic, if you come here to be entertained, fantastic, because that's what we're here for. But I'm gonna try to be an official dance teacher, because I don't know much about the weather report for the rest of the week, or much about bats. So if we applied this as a, we'll do fault, let's, let's start leaders footwork. I was gonna start followers. But if I did leaders footwork for like a whip, right? And I went one, two, three and four of five, six, seven and eight. If I took that rolling through the feet concept and applied it, right, I could roll through one. I could articulate and roll through for two. I could roll three and, and as I'm rolling through my feet, what I want to do is spin my foot to the new place and then roll it to the ground, right? Then as I do my triple, I'm rolling, rolling and stepping across. Then I'm rolling my weight into my foot and rolling my weight in my foot and being very particular. So if you could do that very slowly to practice the rolling through the feet, then you could do it half time. Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, fast. Oh, one, two, three, and four of oh, five, six, seven, and slow. Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. From the leader's perspective, mind melding, but if you're practicing alone, you're dead serious, that is exactly what I do. Same thing from the follower's perspective. We're gonna dance obviously fast. One, two, three, and four of five, six, seven, and eight. And as you're going through that, you're starting to think about the articulation of the foot, whether I'm rolling through the ball of the foot or the heel, your choice. I like the heel, it's easier but I'm thinking about rolling through one. As I'm stepping back, I'm thinking about rolling through for two. I'm rolling three and, right? I'm stepping forward and delaying for four. I'm pivoting around, rolling through for five, back for six, seven, and eight. And then I can do the same thing, fast and slow. Fast, two, three, and four, a uh, five, six, seven, and slow, a uh, one, two, a uh, three, Four, a uh, five, six, seven, eight, oh, one, two, three, four, a uh, five, six, back to fast, oh, one, two, three, and four, a uh, five, six, seven, and eight, and slow, and so forth. We have a question. Yes. Um, are your feet skimming the floor between rolls? Are my feet skimming the floor between rolls? That is a great question. And the great Ray Rivers, my ballroom coach, who's my coach that stands the longest amount of time, um, he would say something to the effect of, Brian, if you see someone picking their feet up, ask them if they'd like to learn to dance. So his theory is the floor is our friend. So if we're picking our feet up from the floor, we're losing the one thing that we have to work off of. So as a general rule, not all the time, I mean, Emily's gonna do some arm styling, but Emily does a lot of cool things. There's definitely moments, but as a basic rule, I am skimming the floor the entire time. It does two different things, number one, it allows me to have pressure into the floor to keep my balance, right? Number two, it forces me to think about the articulation of my foot and what am I doing with my foot? When we get to styling things, what types of things are we doing with our feet? And if we keep them in contact with the floor, it's going to allow us to increase our balance and increase our style and uh, general overall dances. So that's a great point. We call it tracking of the feet, right? So a good drill for that if I was walking forward, if I wanted to walk towards that blue, what do you call those things? Blue banner, these two blue things on either side, right? I would not want to walk across myself. I would want to rotate and swivel my feet. And so what I would do is I would track my foot underneath me. I would track it into the new direction and I would walk in that direction. Now, if I want to go this way, I wouldn't just pick that foot up and walk that way. 
I would track my foot underneath me like we talked about earlier, that rolling count. It's going to track underneath me. I'm going to rotate to the new direction and I'm going to walk in that new direction. So that is a great way to drill. And the idea of this whole class is that you're going to have that music option to go fast and slow so you can drill it slow and then try to do it fast. Any other questions? Cool. So if we take that same concept, right? We've talked about rolling to the feet. We've talked about triple steps, which then you could apply. We don't have time here, but you could apply it to all of your basic patterns. Run through your whips, run through your side passes, and run through your uh, pushes, sugar pushes. Um, but if we took that from a spin perspective, now I know a lot of the leaders don't spin, but it's vital that us as leaders, we either, you can practice along for sure, but you're not going to have to apply it as much, but it's great for you to understand where the follower is in the spins, right? So we talk about it. We've done several classes over the last couple of weeks in spins, but the most common ones in inside turn for the follower, where we go one, two, three, and four, five, and six. And you can find tons of videos that we've done on that stuff. We have a whole course on it if you really want to dig in. But let's kind of cover a couple basics and then how we can apply it with this methodology to practice alone, right? We have one on two. We should know at this point that we're prepped as the follower. Then we're going to close our feet in our chenet turn for three. We're going to step back out for and, and we're going to have a half turn pivot as we step back for four. And then obviously we anchor five and six. So we do it back the other way. And leaders, this is what you're leading all night long. One, we open up for two for our prep. We close our feet for three. We step out for and. We pivot a half turn and step back for four. And then we anchor five and six. So if I did this in that slow-mo drill, right, to music half time, the timing would look like this. Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, a seven, eight, oh, one, two, three, four. I know that's mind melding, but this is how I would do it. Slow mo, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, a seven, eight, oh, one, two, three, four. Then you go fast. Two, three, and four, five, and six, and slow. Two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to stop right here. So here's your pivot. What did we talk about before? It's a step back, right? Whether this is count four of the pattern or you're doing two beats for this, as I'm stepping back out of that pivot, I don't want to just land. I want to think about the same thing we started with was rolling through the foot into my anchor. So we tend to only think about that stuff in one place. Okay, roll to the feet and anchor. And then we plod through the turn. We might even close our feet and we land on four and we plod through. But I want to think one, two, three, and roll through for four, five, and six. So that is also going to improve your connection at the end. Questions so far? Um, there was a request to go back and show the follower's slow count on the whip there. Follower's slow count on the whip. This is mind melding. The whip's going to work great with the sets of eight, so that's the easiest one to work out the numbers. So the follower's whip, if we did it in slow beats, it's two beats for every step, or at least for every full count. We have one, two, three, four. Then we have a triple. Five, six, seven, eight. A one, two, three, four, a five, six, seven, eight. We'll do that from the other side. So it's two beats per full count. A one, two, a three, four, a five, six, seven, eight. A one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's your official count. So if the, if the numbers are really confusing, just practicing it slow and fast. But if you can get to do that to music, um, that is a killer drill. Sometimes the music is very fast. Can you do this with fast music as well? Yes. So sometimes the music is really fast. Can you do it with fast music? That's a great question. Um, yes. It actually, to some degree, works a little bit better to faster music. Assuming you can get through your own basics to fast music, right? If you're struggling getting through your own basics to fast music, that's what I would practice. Forget all the rest of this. Just get your body moving until you can get through the basic patterns to fast music. But then when we have to dance slow, sometimes the faster music, when I do this drill for cha-cha, Megan will uh, second this. When we do this for cha-cha, I actually play music that's uncomfortably fast because I'm not so worried about doing it fast. I'm worried about the time spent through this when it's slow. And if you play actually really slow music, it's almost too much time and we lose track of it. So a little bit of a faster song. I think the one we played was about 
95 beats a minute, 92 beats a minute. So that's actually on the slow side. Um, cool. Any questions? Hopefully that answered. Great. So then we're going to talk a little bit about connection and styling and being smooth. But let's talk about being smooth first. Miss Emily, can I have my props? Yeah, can you pour a little bit more of my props? So we're having fun with the live feed, folks. And we're having fun here while doing it. And it's off, uh, off official business. So we are enjoying uh, supporting the local. Supporting. We're supporting the local businesses here next door, which might be a microbrewery. And we might have a beer going in the background. Shout out to Whole So one of the things that I did when I very first started dancing, to become smooth. And this is a little bit of a segue into Emily's arm styling class that's coming up next. If I dance my basic patterns holding two cups of water, these are water, not IPA, they're water. But if I were to practice maybe my whip with these in my hands, what it would do is force my body to be smooth because I didn't want to spill this, right? If I dance the sugar push, if I practice with cups of water in my hand, whatever my patterns are, right? It would allow me to steady my upper body and allow my body to move underneath. Now, why is this useful? I want to separate. This is what's great about West Coast Swing. In our last little bit of this, we're going to talk about a connection drill. Is I want to separate my body's ability to move from my frame. So I could be connected to my partner and still style around. And a great way to practice moving without communicating that unnecessarily to your partner is, and I'll do the leader's part of a whip is to dance with two cups of water in your hand. I 100% did this for a good, probably my first year dancing, right? I would practice everything with two cups of water in your hand and allow you to be still through your upper body. Cool. Let me pass this back off. I did not have a sip of my water. Anyways, so that's a great drill. Next part, I'm going to pull in Megan has talked about this on previous things. This could be a doorknob. This could be, um, she uses a TheraBand. Is that TheraBand? Is that what you call it? I call it Dynaband. Dynaband. I actually like something. This was perfect. And I was doing this actually with the camera stand before we started. Something that I can grab onto. So what I want to do here is I want to practice being connected to this and maybe doing my triples, right? Just underneath me. This could be leader or follower. And I want to add a little bit of connection to that. And if I do this, back to the camera from a styling perspective, especially in your anchor steps, I want to cultivate the ability of leaving this connected, right? And being able to move to the one side of the slot or to the other side of the slot, right? So I'm going to do this at a different angle. This could be a doorknob. What did someone say? They brought up a, a, a refrigerator. That's probably ideal, right? The reason why I like this is I can apply an amount of pressure to this. And I actually rigged this up with a little bit of weight here. There's a Coke cans. Hope I don't smash them again this time if you guys saw the spins video, right? So I can apply a little bit of pressure to this because in a connection scenario, you'd be, a, you'd be applying a little pressure. So this could be a, a refrigerator where I can apply a little bit of, of a pressure and I don't want to open the fridge door. So I can practice dancing to it. I can practice moving away. I think it's most useful moving out of the slot with both sides. So I can use triple steps if we did this from behind. So triple step triple step, triple step. And then one that I found really useful was if I'm stepping across this way, I want to use a little bit of this pressure to swivel myself across. So we talked about tracking the feet. So I'm using a little bit of pressure to swivel myself across and step. Now I'm pushing on this with a little bit of pressure, right? And I'm using that connection. Now, this is going to give me feedback. That's why I like the cups of water. It gives you feedback. If your upper body is unstill, you're going to end up with sloshy water on your bedroom floor. Ask me how I know. True story. 1997. Right? But this will give you feedback. If you're using the connection too much, you're going to push that over. Does that make sense? So find something that's stable. You can practice swivels. And I can practice applying a little pressure towards it as I swivel and a little pressure away as I swivel. So that will let you explore your styling. You can take some of uh, Emily and Megan's anchor step drills and things like that, connect to this, and this will let you explore your styling while you're practicing your connection to your partner. Another question. Can you steal this, please, Emily? 
Can you explain the relationship between the lead and the timing of the following outstanding on their part? Can you explain the relationship of the lead and the follower in the follower landing, the timing of them landing on their foot. Yeah, so this could get super philosophical, right? As a leader, well, I'm going one, right? So what's going on from the follower standpoint? The leader is leading and I have to step on this. The best way to understand it, I'm gonna give you two things to think about. Number one, forget the leader for a split second, right? Because the better you are in your own body in understanding all the stuff we talked about, the connection into the one, is this, is this my one or is this my one and uh, right? So is my own, what is my own ability to move through my own body? And am, do I know if I'm on time, early or late? If I can master that within myself, right? Then on the other side of the connection, the leader is going to be going, let's assume he's Mr. Metronome perfect. He's going to go and a one. That's going to be his lead. So in a perfect world, can I steal you, Miss Emily? So in a perfect world, if we're anchored back, right, this is going to be tracking and her foot's going to be tracking so that we can monitor our ability to move through our foot, right? Perfect. That's perfect. And then we'd step on the next foot. And if I am dancing like a sugar push, I'm going to step short and she's continuing into that, right? So that's perfect. Thank you, dear. But in reality, it never works that way. So the second part of that is the, is the ability of the follower to go, hey, I know how I want to dance onto my foot to be comfortable and on time and clear. And now if the leader is leading me too fast, I want to develop the ability to stay connected, right? Actually, can you lead me? Yeah. Right? I'm going to make you the bad boy. So Emily is leading me too fast. She's clunking onto that, right? But I know she's a little early. So what I've done is cultivated the ability to stay connected with my fingers, but still manage myself through my foot. So the ability to, as Miss Emily moves too early, right, she's still feeling a connection and I still get there at the time that I need to. Does that make sense? Thank you, Miss Emily. There's a question of what side of that for you inside the follow up side of that to the leader side as well. Yeah, so the leaders, I think the leader is actually slightly easier, right, because we're initiating and asking for the follower, but we are not hopefully driving it. So as the leader, I'm kind of getting in this position saying, hey, would you like to come with me, right? If she is not coming with me, I might say, I might tighten up on this just a little bit, but be careful as the leader. I don't want to start to drive through my arm because the rule is my arm can move much faster than your, her body, right? So as the leader, I'm kind of going like this and I'm kind of waiting slowly and I'm paying attention on the first couple passes in a dance to see is my follower responding quickly, right? or is she a little bit slow? Let's say the follower is a little bit slow. I might actually dance everything much smaller because my follower isn't moving aggressively or comfortably or confidently. So as a leader, I might do the same process, but instead of dancing two normal size steps, I might actually dance very, very little because I know the follower isn't responding the way that I want. Because the flip side of that is I can start to pull and drive that. And again, another ballroom coach taught me this, the more that we don't get as we want to, as leaders, the more we start to push and pull, and then we just kind of create our own problems. Cool. Any other questions? Good deal. I had a bonus for you. Here's the bonus. Another thing you can do, just dry that whole thing out. Just take the booze off. Oh, forget it. Oh. You'll see our booze. <laughs> as I was thinking about this class, and I was thinking about all the different things, like what can we do while we're stuck at home? You can read cool stuff. So here's just a bunch of stuff I grabbed off my... Uh, 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 out of my guest room, because I put all my smart kid looking books in, uh, classes in the books in the guest room. The Talent Code by Daniel Coyle, um, Outliers by Malcolm Godwell, The Psychology of Dance by Taylor, two Taylors, CC and Jim Taylor, maybe they're married. Um, Talent is Never Enough by John Maxwell. If you're a partner dancer and you have a partner and you compete together, dance to your max. This is hard to get. It's Maximilian, some guy, foreign guy. Um, again, <laughs> Um, this is a little bit out there, but um, thinking, sensing, doing, if you're like a philosophical type person, and if you're a total nerd, I know there's a lot of uh, uh, engineer types who dance. If you want to nerd out on the science, I read all these books and then I wanted to read the science behind them and the studies. This is the expertise and expert performance, the Cambridge Handbook of Expertise and Expert Performance. So you can nerd out with some books, and these days, books on tape. But I gotta go, because Emily's class is up in two seconds. Love you guys. Visit us, westcoastswingonline.com. Stay safe, wash your hands. We'll see you soon.